How you doing everybody? This is Val from Needful Toys. Jorge Salazar with the Retro Exchange. And on today's uh, What the Dog Brought In, uh, it's <laughs> just our, our fave. Uh, we deal with a lot of wonderful sellers here in the Houston area. And a lot of people really don't know them by name, but know what they have. So what we want to do is bring light to these shops that, that are great. They're, they're a great need in our environment and are very helpful when somebody that really wants to collect something that's hard to find uh, and then quantity over quality uh, when you're looking for that quality and uh, apparently for George he asked quality and he asked quantity <laughs> you know uh, you know a lot of people have here and there and this guy is how do you want it what quality do you want it do you want him holding a beer do you want him a <laughs> coke whatever he got it all right. i'll pass it back to george well thank you for having me and uh, this is uh, amazing and uh, i really enjoyed doing this because you know we get to talk about toys and what you know brings us together and you know how, how we can become part of the network of collectors that are out there you know i i, I met you val what 20 years ago i mean Man, <laughs> it, it, it's been a it's been a while yeah i can't even remember the dude i was i wasn't even teaching at the time when i met mm. you so i had to be uh oh to, oh two oh, yep. oh one it was and, uh, and it was i had just barely got back into Transformers and I was just getting tore up online. I mean, I was buying them on eBay. They would say complete and then I would, you know, I met George and George go, hey, it's not complete. You need this, this, and this. And this before yep. anybody, anybody did any kind of book to help me uh, be like a reference. He was like, no, man, you're lacking this piece, this piece, this piece. So what I thought I was buying complete, I was paying $150 only to find out that there was two other pieces that were almost $80, $90 for those two pieces. And he had the complete figure for $150. And instead, I ended up paying more then what is it because of taking word of mouth from a eBay seller. So I quickly got away from eBay and just dealing with George because I tell George, hey, look, I need Mirage 100% complete. I want him with tech file instructions, blah, blah, blah. He was, quote me, a great- Unapplied stickers or yeah, yeah. <laughs> applied stickers? Yeah, that was, that was his thing. You want them so. applied, unapplied? Do you want a sticker sheet with it? I mean, it's literally, I asked and I received. Yeah, it was it was hardcore. I mean, especially I started collecting. You know, as soon as I got out of college, because uh, you know, like everybody else, we couldn't afford the toys that we wanted when we were kids. You know, everybody had five, six brothers. I know I had four brothers, and it was tough. But if you had bought one for someone, you know, for one of the kids, you know, you either had to share it or you had to buy it for everybody, and that wasn't an option. But as soon as I got out of college and I can afford some uh, some extra spending cash, I started jumping into just hoarding everything I could find. I mean, uh, I remember, you know, going to the Goodwills, I mean, because that's what we could afford. And, I mean, there was tons of Transformer parts everywhere. And uh, we still couldn't afford that. <laughs> but it was pretty bad. But, it was selective. And, and so, eventually, when I started collecting, you know, one of the things I realized fairly quickly was that, you know, there was a bunch of bots. And people fell in love with the bots. And, you know, you start off with, like, I, I started off with uh, Sunstreaker. It was my favorite. And when I bought him off a, uh, on the street at a flea market in, in New York City, I was like, man, I would really like to have his fists and his missiles and everything he came with so then I went down this rabbit hole and I started hoarding everything that I could find and I would trade with other collectors um, but it didn't I didn't make it big and my eyes didn't get uh, uh, wide open until I went to Botcon as a dealer yeah that was awesome you know the requirement at Botcon was that your table had to be 85% transformer related and 
the rest could be whatever you wanted. And so there, I, you know, I met a bunch of people, uh, a bunch of fans, of collectors that I still know today. We, I have a huge network that I still trade with, um, and we've we've had had this lasting relationship because of the collecting that we've done. And um, it was amazing to find out, you know, a bunch of information such as I had one guy come in and said, "Hey, man," uh, and I don't remember what the order was, but he says, "Do you have the the Korean missiles for like Mirage?" And I was like, "What? Uh, how, what the hell? How can you tell?" He's like, "Well, when you." break them off the tree that they come with there's three colors there's orange red and green and the green you can see within the, the chrome when you break it off the tree those are the ones I'm after and I'd never seen one to this day I've never seen one but that's how hardcore some of these collectors were and um, so anyway I, I used to go to the shows come back with all this extra stuff and I would, I would oh, visit yeah. people like Val and you know and just hey man what do you get what do you need I got this this and that and it was uh, it was just all around fun yeah we got to a point where we quit buying from each other and it was like whatever he needed and I had it was his and it was the same vice versa I needed a part I'd be like hey George I need a spare tire for Hound he's like go get it and it was the same thing and it just became a mutual relationship that it was just like he had my back I had his and pretty much rode like that ever since you know one of the things that you know uh, my son Ozzy helps me in the, in the warehouse a lot we I've got a warehouse full of stuff and sometimes I'll run into things I'm like well when did I get this you know and I remember being at BotCon you know people would always show up and like the box of like Bucky O'Hare or He-Man or you know mask and hey can you give me some credit for this I'm like well sure you know I got what do you want so we'd end up trading I'd box the stuff up ship it back home and you know eight 18 years later, the wife's like, hey, you got to get all your junk out because uh, mm -hmm. either that is going to garage sell, you know, so I'm now going through a bunch of stuff, man. I've got, you know, tons of stuff that, you know, that I've now fallen in love with again, you know, uh, not as much as Transformers because that's what I love, you know, that's what I, I got, got me into uh, collecting was my love for Transformers because I love the cartoon a lot. Uh, and if we could talk a little bit about why, for me, it's important yeah. that, you know, uh, why I like the Transformers so much was because you know the, all the cartoons had a good guy and a bad guy yeah and but the good guy and bad guys were very different the the, the psychology behind them for example uh, Optimus Prime in in the cartoon I felt was the leader because he was the strongest of all of them and he was a good leader and always had good sense of direction and he would always put himself first in danger and put his life up before uh, to save everybody else Whereas Megatron, he was a hardcore, like, this is, you know, business is evil, and this is what it's going to, this is how it's going to go down. And in the cartoon, I always felt like, oh, my God, he's almost going to get away with it. But it was always, like, Starscream, and one of the other guys who would, you know, screw up his plans, and it would it would follow the whole situation. But comparing the, the characters like Megatron with, like, for me, with Cobra Commander, per se, I didn't really, I, I love the cartoon, I was a big fan, but I didn't like Cobra Commander as much as the bad guy, because he was just an idiot. He made so many mistakes that he, you know, I felt bad for Destro and the Baroness and all those other characters that, that were really like legit down with the plans and like, hey, we're going to do this or not. We're doing it. But then he'd end up doing something stupid and he would foil his own plan. Um, and that's why I love these two characters because it was like good and evil for me. That was it. The line in the sand was drawn. They never crossed it and that was it. And that's what when I ran into that Sunstreaker in New York City on a flea market on the on the street, it just took me back, and I was like, "Wow, you know, I got I got to go back now. I got I got to relive my childhood." And here we are. Yep. What about you? What the new uh, War for Cybertron series yet? No, I have not. My son has seen it, and he says he loves it. Um, I, I I have a hard time gravitating from the G1. Well, oh, no, this is, this is G1 redone. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, the this is like yeah it's like a, from what i understood because i watched it and i'm, I'm kind of like you man you could you can never I, I take that back i said you can never do g1 transformers wrong but i'm pretty sure there's somebody that could really mess it up <laughs> but uh i I've, I've been a fan i can watch it over and over yeah. and over again i can watch the same episode i'm a member the what was bozo the clown the the oh yeah what was the show was it bozo the clown yeah. they used to play the same episode every week and it's the one where rumble 
it was a one world frenzy shakes the the uh optimus prime is going over the the uh the sort of like a great fall uh -huh. and then he falls into the water and yeah. this and that and they got to save him i watched this episode about a bazillion times and it was i if you look at my eye i still had the same excitement and worry like the first time I ever watched it and it's like that it that's never cool. gets it never gets old yeah. and that's where like the new stuff when they're trying to revamp and do stuff yeah I love it because it, and, and it's I was talking to George that a lot of people hate the movies and this and that that's like dude they took my childhood and made a movie out of it I don't care how horrible it is uh -huh. they took my childhood hero and turned them into an actual live movie mm -hmm. it can be horrible explosions everywhere Sure, but they but they, but they put Optimus Prime in there. Yeah, and no, at that that's point, cool. yeah, at that point, I'm like, oh, you gotta let it make it, yeah, no matter what you. <laughs> yeah, no, my my favorite, um, what what really the, for me, the the, like for you that scene for me was. Um, the movie when the movie came out and I finally when the movie came out we didn't watch it like two years later and I remember we were talking about oh he died in the in the cartoon series he he's brought back yeah but I, it wasn't until I watched the movie uh, in the very first few scenes when you know um, Megatron invades the the mm -hmm. Autobot ship and then he shoots uh, non heroic son nonsense mm -hmm. and he shoots Ironhide in the face to me it was like yeah that's the bad guy that I knew he's always been and there's no holds Bart and, and they were just shooting left and right killing him you see the dead bodies and I was like this is what it should be you know and like something like uh, G.I. Joe you say, oh we saw all these lasers it's like shit man everybody's a bad shot no one ever gets shot but uh no. <laughs> that's right and so and, they're all past life stormtroopers <laughs> that's right so the movie really brought it home for me and I was like man